Monday, the uh, Turning Point USA chapter here, we all went down into the Free Expression Tunnel here and we painted an advertisement for the, for the event. I was there that night and I was with a group of about six, six or seven other people. Uh, we had come from a planning meeting for Wednesday night uh, to get out some you know, last minute logistics, making some posters and stuff like that. We had been walking back to our cars from North Campus over, um, we were crossing through the Free Expression Tunnel, and we saw that on one entire side of the Free Expression Tunnel there was a culture war advertisement. We saw several of what we believe to be Turning Point USA members, and what we first thought, well, we don't have any paint right now, so we can't do too much. We're not going to confront them at the moment, but maybe we can get some paint and come back in about an hour and cover it up with our own messaging because we don't want this event promoted on our campus because it's making people feel unsafe. So about 45 minutes later, we come back with some paint and we see that they're still there. And when we uh, had first gotten there and first seen the painting, they had uh, finished painting. So we were a little surprised to still see them there. Uh, we heard, overheard one of them say that we'll stay in case anyone comes to cover it up. And so we realized, well, they're just gonna wait and try to uh, cause a conflict. And uh, So originally it was about, it was about six to eight of us that they moved spray paint. Um, but since there was a spoken word and uh, sort of rap event that was on the one end of the free expression tunnel to word on the tally side, uh, about a dozen of those people sort of came us and started backing us up, arguing with the Turning Point USA members who were, you know, harassing us, misgendering me, um, and another student, um, you know, saying pretty transphobic comments. Um, I believe Jack Bishop himself said something on, well, she, he, or whatever it is, you know, referring to us as it. We were down there painting, and we were probably three quarters of the way done. And then, without without any notice, invitation, or any kind of warrant at all, uh, but we had about two dozen socialists and communists from the Young Democratic Socialists of America here, and from a larger uh, plethora of organizations mm -hmm. under are call, are called No Hate on NC State. Um, so we go in with the spray paint, and it was again about. I mean, it was only about four of us with actual spray paint, and then there was a few other cans that were being unused at first. Um, and we go over and we started writing our own messages on the wall. Um, and that's when they come over with uh, their phones videoing us. And again, we, uh, they were saying several links to us, but we, for the most part, ignored them and were just trying to paint. Uh, that we had about two dozen of them roll up into the, into the tunnel with more spray paint than you can find in a Walmart. And they began to deface everything that we had just done um, as, we were, or as we were still painting it. Uh, um, and then at one point, um, a man in a, in a gold leather jacket came up in front of us and tried to get in front of our spray paint. We attempted to move several times. We moved from almost one end of the free expression tunnel to the other end, trying to avoid him. And so we could paint and, you know, make the piece over there is how we wanted. And I mean, the free expression tunnel, sometimes things don't even last an hour. People cover things up pretty quickly. It's a hotly contested space, especially for political messaging. And the fact that they're trying to get in front of us and prevent us from using the space that's open to all students, we think is pretty despicable. Um, at one point, we decided to stop moving because they were just following us anyway. And we just continued to spray around them and warn them, don't get so close to the spray paint. Like, the, it's not a good idea. Um, we are doing our best to avoid spraying you, and so on. And, we, and for, for having the audacity to stand my ground and defend what we were doing, I was spray painted in the eye and had my jacket here completely ruined. And then um, that man in the, in the leather jacket moved a, away from me, and then within about the span of 10 seconds, moved over to another person in our group and put his head in front of a can of spray paint. To our knowledge, he was not sprayed in the face. Um, we were able to see his face after the whole time. Um, there was no spray paint on his face that we could see. Uh, there was spray paint on the back of his jacket, but that was because he was putting his back onto a wall with wet spray paint. And it wasn't just our spray paint, it was the paint that they had uh, put on the wall as well that was still wet. Um, so we think it is a ridiculous uh, accusation to call this assault against one of the members of our coalition. Um, and we are going 
to fight that um, in whatever way, whatever way we can. Um, and we've been on social media disputing this narrative that has now been promoted by Pat McCroy, transphobic Congressman Dan Bishop, who drafted the HB2 bill, which we later found out the man in the gold jacket in the video is his son. It's been promoted by Charlie Kirk himself, and he even spoke about it at the event at NC State. Wait, there, there's a right way to do things and a wrong way to do things. The right way would have been to come the next day, come the next ne or come the next morning, heck, come the next hour after we left, and then cover the stuff up. I have no problem with them just spray painting over it, yep. whatever, we can repaint it, we can advertise in other ways. But the concerted effort by them to come while we were still there with to greatly outnumber us with, with a ton of spray paint to harass us, to insult us. They made fun of a, fr or a, a friend of mine who has a medical condition. They started uh, they started insulting him to his face and making fun of him. The, these are a bunch of hateful people. They came out in an intentional effort to intimidate and to censor conservative speech on, pr or on campus. At the moment, I'm very disappointed at how the media is printing this story. Everyone else that was in that tunnel that night could dispute Jack Bishop's recollection of the events. Um, when campus police showed up after they called campus police, uh, they showed them the video, uh, the Turning Point USA members showed them video of the event. I believe they had several but only posted one. The university police sort of gave a wish-washy statement that both sides were at fault and gave a student conduct charge to one person um, that was present, it wasn't even spray painting at the time, uh, for allegedly assaulting another student. Our, our side of the story for that is someone bumped into him and then claimed it was assault. We're calling for all student conduct charges to be dropped 